Uh, hey guys, what's going on? So, uh, this is a video that I've been meaning to make for a little while now. Uh, well, uh, so, so, the history of this is that uh, a, a couple of tier lists ago, uh, somebody told me to that I should separate legendaries and... Uh, what's it called, legendaries, uh, from all the commons, rares, and epics, and I thought that, you know, you know, like, you could just do that in your head, like, you know, this is an entire tier list of everything, um, like, why don't you just, like, you know, it's all there, like, why don't you just separate it in your head, um, and then what ended up happening was there were so many, like, commons, rares, and epics that were actively moving into, like, being really good cards, to where every common rare and epic that wasn't a meta card um, just got relegated to being an F tier card, basically. And so then I then I thought to myself, and I was like, you know what, I should do a separate tier list for each thing. That and like the videos were getting like way too long. Like I was, I had so many thoughts on every legendary and then every common and then every rare and then every epic. It was it was a lot. And so then. Uh, the, the 24.0 comes out and I start to question whether or not I should even do a tier list, um, specifically because most of my thoughts from the last tier list would just carry over to this one. And then I, I posted it in my community section, um, and a bunch of people voted and they said, yes, do a common rare and epic tier list. Um, it gets significantly less, uh, views than a legendary, obviously, but because everybody said that they wanted one. Um, I tried to figure out some creative way that would make me not feel like I'm just repeating myself from the 23.0, and so I created a separate, uh, in like my legendary 24.0 uh, tier list, um, I created a separate subcategory above S tier, um, and that is uh, meta supports. Um, I wanted to leave this on the on the page for a little while so that you could uh, screenshot it if you wanted to, um, but let's get into this. So, meta supports um, are actual cards that are being used in meta decks. Uh, decks that are at the top of the list, um, whether or not they are just a, a regular, they're all just regular support cards. Um, none of them are DPS cards because you should not be using uh, commons, rares, and epics to uh, as uh, as your DPS card. Um, this, it, I really want to emphasize that none of your cards in your, none of the cards that you should be using in any serious, uh, in any serious way, uh, should be a common rare and epic. Um, and I'll get into that. But these are all the meta deck support cards. Uh, Portal Mage is used in the Minotaur Meteor deck. Uh, Earth Elemental is used in the Banshee deck. I will never understand, probably because I don't play Banshee, I will never understand why they don't just use, uh, Trapper or Chemist, um, where, like, Earth Elemental is just, like, the far superior thing that every single Banshee, Banshee DPS deck uses. Um, I suppose whenever I max out a Banshee and I start using it and I st start trying to use Trapper and Chemist, I'm just gonna be like, oh, wow, you know, Earth Elemental does actual damage and it does the same thing and it does it better, I don't know. Um, but I do know that, I, I can, uh, I can understand that, you know, the Banshee deck uses that as its sole support card, and it does large quantities of damage. Uh, Grindstone is obviously, uh, Boreas Grindstone, um, the, uh, the Mime is in, uh, Robot. I was told on stream, uh, that, uh, that Mime should be in a meta support, because it is in the Robot deck, which is a meta deck. Um, and then obviously Chemist and Sharpshooter are used in basically every deck. Um, I'm doing this, uh, post 24.1 patch, so Chemist and Sharpshooter have both been nerfed, um, but I still think that they are, there's, there's nothing else that does it. Um, and when you have a card where its only job is the one specific thing and that one specific thing is good, even if you nerf the card, there's no alternative so you're probably still going to use the card. Um, so Chemist and Sharpshooter are both very good. Um, with all that being said, everything else, uh, these are all the rest of the commons, rares, and epics. These are, this is a list of everything in order from what I think is best to what I think is worst. Uh, so it is left to right order, um, what I think is, is the best to the worst. Um, so S tier cards, I will always highly value Portal Keeper. I think that Portal Keeper is, um, I've been saying this ever since I did my first tier list, that Portal Keeper was the best card in the game. Um, 
I will always highly value Portal Keeper for being a card that uh, has the ability to cleanse. Um, cleansing is so important in this game, and if you, especially um, if you are a new player, uh, you will win so many games if you have the ability to cleanse and your opponent does not. Um, if you are in the beginning of the game, your first task that you should learn is how to cleanse. How to use units that cleanse themselves. How to, how, um, ways that you can integrate a portal keeper into your deck. Um, highly value mermaid over every other hero. Um, because if you, if you are in the beginning of this, this game, you will win so many more matches if you have the ability to cleanse and your opponent gets Dark Priested and dies. Um, or if your opponent gets King Pudding and dies. Or if your opponent is deciding to play Shaman, probably not Shaman, Shaman is terrible now. Um, but if they play Witch, um, and they decide to use one of their slots as, a, you know, Harlequin, Mime, Witch, right? And they're trying to use that against you. If you have a Portal Keeper and you can cleanse, three of their cards are now dead cards in their, in their deck. Um, and it's just, it's you have to value um, being able to cleanse, and Portal Keeper does that. Um, and it's it's the specific reason why I would run it in every if if I was just starting out, I would run it in every single deck that I was creating. Um, I do think that Crystal Mancer is probably the best of the commons, rares, and epics. Um, I hate saying it. If you have caught any of my streams, um, I have a firm passion, passionate hatred, uh, for Crystal Mancer. Um, I don't think that you should be using High Arcanist. If you are gonna use anything, use Crystal Arcanist. Um, I, the three second pause on High Arcanist, uh, is just too much of a detriment. If you, uh, I have a video in my shorts. Um, if you go, if you're, if you get to double bosses and you go king pudding into bedlam, your king pudding, you will, uh, your initial hit will hit the king pudding. It'll split into th different things. Uh, your second hit three seconds later will hit the other th things. And now you have wasted six seconds and you're bed and you're definitely going to get bedlamed. It's very bad. Um, if you are going to use crystal mancer, use crystal arcanist, um, I find that most new people, uh, they, they see the Hierarchanus damage and they just decide to push that. Uh, they use a growth tile, they use Hierarchanus, they use all the support cards. Um, but the damage is not the problem. Uh, it's the three second pause and the three second pause people like just kind of like omit from their brain and think that it's nothing because they're doing so much damage and eventually that will catch up to you. Um, and I, I would highly recommend that you, if you are going to push, uh, Crystal Mancer, use Crystal Arcanist. Um, it's much better. Uh, Rogue, uh, the Rogue Shinobi deck is, I, I think that it's very good. Um, the, the thing that holds it back is the fact that it does not, uh, it, that you can only get Shinobis on a 15% chance. Um, it, it's also the fact that it doesn't have a, uh, a mechanic that allows it to grow in damage. Um, it just has flat damage. Uh, your crit damage, your, your crit, um, strike is also factored in. So as you grow, um, as a player and your crit damage becomes more, it technically grows. But as you grow as a player, you should probably have legendary cards. Um, which is my entire, like, takeaway from all of this. Um, if you are being forced to use commons, rares, and epics, um, Crystal Mancer, uh, the Crystal Arcanus version, Rogue, if you have it all the way to 15, or Reaper, if you have it all the way to 15, are the only ones that I would really suggest. Um, I, I, I guess there can be an argument to be made that you could use Sharpshooter, but again, all of these, um, are hampered by the idea that none of these cleanse. Um, if you don't have a level 5 Mermaid, uh, or a lot of counter spells spec to all of these different types, um, it's going to be a very difficult climb for you um, because you will just die to a to a negative effect, um, and that's why these decks inherently are just so much more difficult to build. Um, I feel like if you find if you have your yourself a level fifteen any one of these, I feel like you should have a better legendary unit. That is probably better than your level 15, any one of these. Um, but with that being said, I think that those are the best. Um, I think Hunter is not great. Um, I think that it, 
I'm I'm in an S tier cat. I'm in the S tier of this, and I'm already saying that Hunter is not amazing. Um, Hunter is a uh, support card. Um, I know that you can look at it as a uh, a DPS card because it does damage, and then you can use the right side where it does uh, increasing damage, or the I, it might be the left side. Um, where you can get increasing damage every trophy that you get, but honestly, it's much better as a support card. If you are low in the in the rankings, if you use this as a support card, um, with the where the boars gain more health every single time uh, you kill a boss or mini boss, um, I think that that is the better version because what you can do is merge out every single one of your hunters and then just focus on your actual DPS card, use it as a support card, and over the course of the game, the boars will just keep gaining more and more in health every single time you kill a boss or mini boss. Because it's not if you kill a boss or mini boss with a hunter, it's just if a boss or mini boss dies. So you can literally have just the one on the field, and then it'll keep growing over the course of the game. Um, I think that's the best way to use it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much... I've tried using it as a DPS card, um, and it just doesn't work because of its random shooting. Uh, I think that Clown... Uh, the reason why I have it ranked so high is because if you don't have Harley Quinn, Clown is your next best option. And because if you don't have Harley Quinn to copy units to gain more of the same thing, um, Clown is going to help you. Um, and the fact that it gives you mana back if it fails is also good. Um... The obvious problem with Clown is that you get the Clown debuff, which, again, if you have a Portal Keeper, that becomes much better. Um, I think Executioner is... It's not great, but as a as the only thing with percentage damage um, that's left, basically, uh, I think that it's, it's fine. It's not great. It's at the bottom of S. It's still an S-tier card, um, but, I, but I think that, like... If you don't have, again, this is all under the assumption that you don't have better options. You don't have the better legendary options. Uh, uh, the be the better legendary option um, is obviously just dealing more damage. Um, because if a thing has a billion health and you have, oh, it kills it whenever it gets to less than 25% or whatever, uh, you still have to deal all that amount of damage in order for it to trigger. If you can just deal, if you focus on just dealing more damage, you can kill something quicker. Um, you don't have to get to just that, that 20% or that 25%. Because it's the only thing with percentage damage, it makes executioner much worse. Um, because you still have to do the rest of that damage in regular damage. Um, I think that it's still fine, but I, I wouldn't pick it too highly. Uh, vampire, even with all of its talents, uh, I think because it only really does the one thing, it just gains you mana. Uh, mana isn't as important as most people uh, at low levels think. Um, the, the reason why you think that you need more mana is because you're not dealing enough damage to kill monsters. Because killing monsters gives you mana. And if you feel like you need to get more mana from other sources that is not killing monsters, you're going the wrong direction. Um, I do think that if you get uh, a vampire to level 15, I think it's really funny that you can use the the white that it that it creates uh, whenever you bite something, when it becomes a lord. I think that it's really funny that you can use that as a kill condition. If you, it, like, it, given the right circumstance, you can act actively use it as a kill condition. Uh, the, when you spawn the uh, the vampire on their side, it... It doesn't go to the beginning of the row. It goes to the front of the monster uh, that's in the front, and it spawns there. So if they're about to get hit by a monster, you can spawn it, and then they'll get hit twice. And I think that that's really funny. So if you do spawn it on like a mini boss, or obviously a boss, um, they'll get hit with the white, then they'll get double hit with the boss or mini boss and die. Um, I think that's like the best, like the funniest way to win. Um, and I've, I've had it happened to me a couple of times but it's so like rare to pull off like they were already gonna die anyway and now they're dead more and using win more cards um is never an option for me i don't think that you should use cards to quote unquote win more because you were probably gonna win anyway and now you just win more um it's not going to help you in situations where you're losing um and i think that that's that's the reason why i have it so low
And by when I say have it so low, this is S tier, and I'm already speaking very ter terribly about all of these cards. Um, in A tier, I feel like these are the best, uh, like, slow uh, supports. Um, I think that Bombardier is the best of the slow supports. I don't understand why Bombardier is so much better than a cold ma uh, than a cold mage with max talents. Um, Bombardier has no talents, and I feel like most people um, in in um, serious decks would rather run Bombardier than run uh, cold mage uh, with max talents. Um, I think that when they finally give bombardier talents again and, and maybe it'll stun bosses again um i think that that's when it will become better um it'll probably become like an s tier or even an event a, a a meta support card um but as of right now i think it's still good it's probably better than a cold mage um even though i don't understand it i just know that more people you'll see more people run bombardier if given the choice than a cold mage um and i think that alchemist even with the nerf in 24.1 um the nerf to the golem i think it's still fine um I, I was still fine with just leaving it here. Um, in terms of uh, B tier cards, uh, these would need talents uh, to get better. In the case of Engineer, it already has talents and it's just not good. Um, Banner, I think that if Banner got talents, that could be a meta support card. Or uh, uh, not, maybe not a meta support card, but maybe like a, probably an S tier card. Like an S tier card where if you had like max talents, it would probably be like a grindstone um, and it, it could be much better with commons rares and epics to to push you know like into your legendaries um i think that cold elemental in concept is very good but in practice it's very terrible i think that it's it's solid enough to be in a b tier but i don't think it's good enough to be anything better than that uh it, the the best thing about cold uh cold, cold elemental is the ice shards that it throws but it only throws ice shards whenever uh, the monsters are under control effects. Um, so Trapper Cold Elemental is probably the best way to go. Uh, if you're trying, but, th but then at that point, you're trying to use Cold Elemental as a DPS card. And I think that that's also a very strange move. Um, I, I don't think that it's strong enough. It doesn't have talents. I don't think it's strong enough to, to be a DPS card. Um, I think that if it got talents, I think, I, I think it could very easily go into an S tier. Um, I think a Trapper Cold Elemental deck where Cold Elemental has other talents, um, could be very strong. But I, but as of right now, I, I think that it's probably a B tier card. It's still okay. Um, and if you can get it to where you have a lot of control effects happening and you have like a bunch of cold elementals and they're all throwing the shards. I think it's really fun to watch. Um, but beyond that, I don't think it's, it's that strong. Um, especially because it doesn't have a, a damage increase mechanic either. So, um, at the best, at best, it's going to stay wherever it is, um, in damage and then just over the course of the game get progressively worse. Um, Wind Archer. I think is the best of the terrible cards. Um, it's not good. Uh, Gargoyle is fine, but it's so hard to set up, and that's why I put it a little bit less than Wind Archer. Um, I think that Gargoyle is technically better, but it's it's really difficult to set up a Gargoyle. Uh, sometimes you get um, you only get the attacking Gargoyle. Sometimes you only get uh, the defensive Gargoyles, um, and just the just the entire idea to set it up. To set up a gargoyle board um, is really difficult. Um, and then Priestess, with all of her talents, I don't think is great. Um, I've tried using it as a DPS card. Um, it, I definitely wouldn't recommend it as a support card. Um, I would recommend like Vampire as a support card that is giving you mana more well well above a Priestess. Um, and then as a DPS card, um, even though it has a mechanic where it increases in its attack. Uh, I still don't think it's good. Engineer is the the saddest card on this list because I think that Engineer, with all of its talents and how good the talents sound, it's it's such an enticing card. Um, and I don't think it's that great. Uh, 
even with the the change to its attack speed uh, talent, uh, it, it was 30%, now it's 50%. I've used it. I've used it in, in like a max kind of capacity with new, with like a max scrapper and a mermaid and, you know, just trying to scrapper my board. Um, it's still not good. It doesn't feel like it attacks fast enough. Um, when you're trying to build like a monk board, but with engineer, it doesn't, it doesn't seem great. Um, even with the max talent of being able to upgrade itself, uh, that's only on chance and it's only on boss. And now with the games being uh, much quicker than they used to be, you're not getting as many bosses to build up your uh, your uh, your chance to level up. Um, and you're getting a lot. You're you're you're, um, you're getting a lot less bosses um, for you to be able to. Um, upgrade your field. Um, so for that reason, I just, I, I don't think it's that great. Um, the C tier cards, these are just like, this is one step above F. Like, I wouldn't recommend these at all. Um, Cauldron and uh, Zealot are both very tied together. Zealot is so bad. It's it's not, don't use Zealot. Um, I think that I, I would use Catapult or Pyrotechnic over Zealot. Um, or any of these above DPS cards. Uh, Thunderer is fine. It's a step above a Lightning Mage, but now with the J change, um, those cards aren't even good or, or viable at all in DPS decks. Um, I feel like if I did this tier list before where when J had the crack shot ability, um, that was much better. I think those would have scored much higher, but now that crack shot is not great anymore, those are now basically back to where they used to be. Um, I think that Cauldron, even though it's one of the first mana uh, givers that you have, it doesn't deal. It doesn't really deal damage. And even though it has the the level up mechanic that is very enticing as a level uh, fifteen ability, um, I don't think that the level up mechanic is good either. Because one, you only have a small chance to get it in the first place, and two, it's random. So. Sure, you want more cauldrons on the field so that you have better chances to upgrade, but if you have more cauldrons on the field, then your cauldrons could upgrade other cauldrons. If you have less of them, then you have less of a chance to upgrade, um, which is which then is much worse in that direction. So if you have just the one cauldron, you're getting less of a chance, but if you have more cauldrons, the cauldrons can upgrade themselves. Um, it's just like, it's a mechanic that sounds good, but it just doesn't work. Um, I think catapult with the change is much better, uh, where it's when, as you upgrade it, it uh, it shoots quicker, um, but it's you know it's static damage and it's just not good. Um, Century is a card that sounds like it should be good, and I think with talents and a rework, maybe it could be good. Um, but as as it is right now, um, I I remember when I was climbing uh, on my separate account to get. Um, to 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 uh, League Five, um, so that I could get the duck. Uh, Sentry, even in the beginning of the game, when you first start, is not great. It sounds like such a good card that it has increasing attack speed um, as it level at it, as it quote unquote levels up, and it never feels good. I would rather use like a base level engineer uh, than um, than a Sentry. And then as far as like the F tier cards, this is also in order of what I would use um, from best to worst. Lightning Mage, because it attacks three things. Um, Fire Mage, because it attacks two things. Uh, Archer, because it attacks normally um, and has increasing attack speed. Uh, Poisoner, because it does poison damage. Thrower is random. But it, but at the very least, it does things far beyond uh, round two. Uh, Ivy works until round two, and Plague Doctor only works on the first round, and then does nothing else beyond that. Um, and that's how I would rank the F tier cards. Um, but yeah, like what I want to impress upon you is, please don't invest too heavily into commons, rares, and epics. Um, I get the idea that maybe you don't have a lot of good, or you don't feel like you have a lot of good legendaries, and maybe you think that Crystal Mancer is good, and it is fine to a point, and you should then stop using Crystal Mancer and switch to a legendary card. Every legendary card is a better DPS damage dealer than any 
uh, common, rare, and epic. Um, you can, if you know, if you if that's all you have, um, then use it. But if you have legendaries, once you start, you should focus your attention on legendaries. If uh, like, don't stop focusing on legendaries to focus on level fifteening a crystal mancer. Like that's not the way to go in this game. Uh, crystal mancer will drop off, and it will not push any harder than where it where it goes. It might get you to the top of like the beginning of a triple boss, and then you'll die, or the like you know to the middle point of double bosses, and then you'll die. It's not great. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll catch you guys next video.